Hey guys, Max here from Lawn Hub. We are back at Lawn Hub HQ yeah, today. That sounds so sad. <laughs> back here at Lawn Hub. Hey guys, back here at Lawn Hub. Hey guys. Get some gusto. It's hard to, because I'm trying to remember what I've got to say. <laughs> hey guys, Max here. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days. You sit up in my seat and get confident, you know? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, Max here from Lawn Hub, and we are back at Lawn Hub HQ today answering some common questions on these turf related chemicals. Uh, we've had not a lot of the specific ones being asked about, but we are getting a lot of general comments about how to read a label or. Um, with uh, re-entry periods, withholding periods and stuff like that. So I thought today I would have a look at some questions on bow and arrow mainly. Um, and it's sort of pertinent because this is a time of year where a lot of people are spraying out their broadleaf weeds and we just sprayed Clint's lawn with bow and arrow. So we'll do a few questions on that. Um, we'll get a, our leaflet up to show you where we're talking about as I'm explaining it and we'll go from there so you guys can get a bit better guide of you know how to actually read the label how to understand what those some of those words mean um, this is a basic very general um, guide we are not trying to teach professionals how to read labels obviously they know um, we are here to educate the homeowner and someone that's new to lawn or someone that hasn't really put out chemicals before and doesn't really know um, what precautions to take and what they have to do after with aftercare so we'll go through this label first. One of the common questions we get is when can I go back on the lawn after applying bow and arrow? Or when can my pets go back on the lawn? Um, and I'll direct you to page six of the leaflet, which is on the back of the bottle. Show you here. So there's a front, back, lift here, peel back label. Simple as that. All right, so like I said, back to page six, and in big bold writing, withholding period. Do not graze treated turf or cut any treated area, including the turf clippings, for feeding to poultry or livestock for 14 days after application. Now, what that means is, for those of you that have chickens, rabbits, or maybe even sheep, I don't know, or cows um, that are grazing on your lawn or a treated area where you are using bow and arrow, you cannot have them graze that those clippings or feed them the clippings for 14 days after you have applied bow and arrow. Now, that's something that the AVPMA, I think I got that right, have um, tested and, and the company like Turf Culture would have paid quite a lot of money to have that done. Um, so that, that's the guide. Remember that these labels are legally binding documents. You must read them before spraying out any of these chemicals. Um, if you don't, and they can prove you didn't, um, you'll be liable for losses, damages, whatever. So that's the first part of that. Um, in regards to your pets and kids going back on the lawn, um, usually with these sorts of products, once they're dry on the leaf, so they've had four to six hours out in the sun, they've done their job, they're going through the plant. Basically, it's, it's pretty safe to go back on the lawn. Um, if you've got like a heavy dew, and you shouldn't really be applying this with a heavy dew anyway, if you've had like a heavy dew or just a little bit of rain afterwards, it's gonna A, not be as effective to put this out on the lawn because it needs to dry, and B, it's just a, the chemical's gonna stick around for a bit longer. It's not gonna fully dry out and some of the stuff's not gonna evaporate. Um, I wouldn't have the kids or the pets back out in there until you're totally comfortable. I often say to people when they ask me through our messenger, and guys, keep asking questions, it's fine, absolutely, I'm happy to answer them. Um, what people, I'm saying to people is that you should be really keeping dogs and kids off the lawn until the next day if you can. I know it's a bit of a strain, kids love being outside, it's hard to keep pets away from certain areas, we understand that. But to be completely safe, I don't. I think it's it's worth waiting that extra 12 to 24 hours. Yeah, and personally, like if you were thinking about grazing on grass, 
I, I wouldn't really recommend it. it tastes like crap. So, yeah. so that's just one label. Um, we've got we've got a lot of products here. We've got the Growth Regulator. We've got Fipronil Ant Killer. We've got the Five Star Insecticide, which is Bifenthrin. That's the active ingredient. We've got Bumper, which is a proper conazole. Got Spartan, which is your pre-emergent, and Tyrum, which is another insecticide. They all have different withholding periods. Now, um, some of these products here, they don't actually have a time frame. So technically you shouldn't graze any animals on these affected lawns. So if, if the lawn's been sprayed by these products, you really shouldn't be grazing animals at all. So there's no time frame, which means either A, the company that manufactured these didn't pay for um, the testing required because it wasn't applicable um, and they don't know whether it will affect animals so chickens your sheep stuff like that I'm not sure whether many people have sheep grazing on their lawns but anyway um, we just wanted to cover back on those things just so you guys know um, and we'll go into a bit more detail with this one here fipronil um, which is the this is the granular or the sand version of this um, this is a really toxic one for dogs uh, and it does say that on the label. Uh, we'll put this label up so you guys can see it while I'm explaining it. Yeah, so before treatment, remove animals and pets from the area to be treated, cover or remove any open food and water containers. This is pretty important. Keep away from domestic pets, especially dogs. If dogs eat the granules, contact your veterinary surgeon immediately. That to me sounds like it's pretty serious for starters. Um, and then there's a caution. So use with caution around pets. Ensure pr product is well dispersed, i.e. swept in between the pavers, cracks and crevices and disperse into the soil and or lawn. Cover or remove fish ponds, aquariums, etc. before application. So obviously this is a really bad one for aquatic life and, and for dogs especially. So just it's, it really is important to not just go, oh, okay, yeah, that's the right active ingredient. I'm gonna put that on my lawn because that's what the guy told me to do. It really is about taking a couple of minutes to A, find out exactly how much you need to use. And you can always refer to our backpack calibration video that we did last week for liquids. And then B, to find out, you know, is this harmful for my family, for my kids, for my dog, whoever else you've got at home. So. Um, and of course, we go into PPE as well. So PPE being your personal protective equipment, um, we need to have that on. Yes, I got caught out in a previous video not completely adhering to the instructions. Forgetful moment, that's all it is. Um, this one here, Bifenthrin, it's got a handy leaflet that comes with it. It's covers, this one covers a lot of different things. It covers fruit trees, it covers ornamentals, it covers turf. It is quite a dense booklet. Just remember that you are treating the turf. So that's what we're gonna go to. The crop is the turf. We'll have this up on the screen so we can show you. Um, and some of the pests that we can cover are lawn, armyworm, sod webworm, Argentine stem weevil adults, African black beetle, Billbug adults, black ants, coastal ants, funnel ants, meat ants, sugar ants, and stinging ants. So there's quite a lot of things that it covers, but guys, make sure that you go further into it and have a look um, at what you're going to be wearing. So, um, and that is on page 7,853,263 because it's a massive booklet. All right, safety directions on the last page, page 12. Poisonous if swallowed will irritate the eyes, avoid contact with eyes and skin, blah, blah, blah. When you are opening and preparing to spray, wear cotton overalls button to the neck and wrist, a washable hat, elbow length PVC, neoprene or nitrile gloves and a half face piece respirator. When using prepared spray, wear cotton overalls button to the neck and wrist, a washable hat, elbow length PVC, neoprene or nitrile gloves. Wash hands after use and after each day's use, wash glove Wash gloves, contaminated clothing and respirator. And if rubber, wash with detergent and warm water. That's pretty serious stuff. Like this is homeowner gear and it's, it's registered for use in, in turf in a lot of situations uh, whereby professionals use this, homeowners use it, contractors use it. It's just scary stuff to know what can happen to you if you don't do the right thing. And 
probably after I got caught out using the Spartan in the wrong way, I, re I went back and read a bit, a bit more about it and yeah, I think maybe it's a good thing to read about what can happen to you if you don't use the right stuff because um, it sort of sh just shocks you into action. So if you um, are a bit worried about it or you've got kids at home that you're worried about, like I said, wait an extra couple of days or a day um, until you're happy that it's dried. Um, and yeah, if you're really worried about it, please contact a contractor. That's the safest way to do things. You may not have to buy these products. Yes, I'm pushing a sale away somewhere else, but I think in the, in the goodness of looking after everyone, um, contact a contractor. They are the professionals that have done the training. Um, and if you're yeah, not confident or worried, get them in, get them to do it, pay them whatever their cost is, and then um, and have that peace of mind that they've done the right thing and your family's safe. So, thanks for tuning into this one. Um, bit of a tricky one to follow, uh, but yeah, guys, if you've got any questions on labels, shoot them through, email me, max at lawnhub.com.au, um, or DM me on the socials. You can get in contact with me in heaps of ways. Um, hopefully I can answer your questions accurately. This is not exactly my forte. I've done a little bit of study on it. Um, but yeah, if I can answer the questions, I will. Thanks, guys.